um, meeting. Um, and again, like I was saying, our next meeting is May 13th. It's gonna be an hour and a half, so nine to 10.30. Um, June 10th will be our cultivating volunteers. That'll be nine to 10. Um, and you'll get those Zoom links in two separate emails. So be watching for those. Um, after this meeting tomorrow, you'll get the recording and the survey. So be sure to complete those. Um, my, again, for those of you that just came in, Margarita White here with the Community Foundation of Noble County. And this is part of our nonprofit series this year that we're partnering with the Crossroads United Way and the DECO Foundation. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Debbie who is gonna introduce our speaker. Uh, it helps to unmute, right? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Debbie Pfaffenberger with Crossroads United Way. Um, I am super excited to introduce to you September McConnell, and I'm going to read her bio because there's a whole lot more here than I could ever even hope to memorize. So bear with me. I apologize. My husband is calling. I will turn off my phone. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry for that. So September McConnell is Hoosier born and bred and raised in the region, receiving her BS in public and corporate communications from Butler University. <clears throat> An internship with the Indiana Sports Corporation led to a position as director of communications for the IU Natatorium and Track Stadium. During that time, she worked coordinating media relations for events such as the Pan Am Games and the US Olympic trials for swimming and diving and track and field. Wow, September, I had no idea. That's a whole lot of cool That's stuff. Pretty good life, yeah. Yeah. A move north, love of husband, outranked love of Indy. I understand that. Led her to the position of marketing director for the Fort Wayne Museum of Art for almost a decade. She cites developing an exhibition catalog for the artist Christo, the guy who wrapped entire buildings in fabric, as one of her most interesting museum endeavors, no doubt. She currently serves as the CEO to the Community Foundation of Whitley County. Under her supervision <clears throat> for the past 24 years, the organization has grown to include over 150 endowed funds, which she refers to as a lot of promises made. Under a team of friends who just happened to work together, the foundation has enjoyed many successes, including the creation of one of the state's first giving circles for women's health, which provides free mammograms to uninsured women in the community. Woohoo! Last December, the Community Foundation was awarded a $2.6 million leadership grant from Lilly Endowment for their next level Whitley County work. Career jumps from sports to fine arts to community development have always been supported by her husband of 34 years, Jim, who has a dental practice in Columbia City. They are parents to a son and daughter who have fled the nest, leaving behind a grumpy bulldog to be doted on and adored. <laughs> that is a lovely bio. And here you have September McConnell. Good morning, everybody. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and see all these faces and some I know and some I don't. So um, I, I hope that I, you don't mind. I'm going to call. I see Sean Ellis right away and I have some things I'm going to share about Sean because she's a great storyteller. Um, really, you know, I never set out to, to go the field of nonprofit intentionally. My life just kind of fell into it and, and it, it aligned with my heart um, and communications was always my thing. But I'll tell you, nonprofit communications is hard sometimes to understand. And I, I'm ashamed to tell you, I don't remember the book that I read this in, but um, I thought I'd, I'd share a quick analogy. Um, somebody said that it, the, the gentleman wrote that if a circus is coming to town and you paint the sign saying the circus is coming to town, that's advertising. If you take that sign and you put it on an elephant and you march that elephant through town, that's promotion. If the, if the elephant walks through the mayor's flower bed, that's publicity. And if you get the mayor to laugh about it, that's public relations. And if you did it all on purpose, that's marketing. So I always thought that was kind of funny. And um, I think that the other, the other piece of that is then when you get everybody to go and they start buying um, popcorn and, and, and playing games or whatever, then you're, you're handling the sales part of it. So at any rate, I want to talk to you today a little bit about public relations and specifically um, storytelling, which I guess is the thing I, I 
kind of think I do pretty well. There's there's a lot that I, I lean on for help. But for some reason, I've always loved storytelling. And I think that it goes back to even being a little kid and, and loving. I love to be read, read to when I was little. And, and um, the stories just always resonate. I, I remember a lot of weird stories. So I don't know why I have that weird little trait that I can hang on to things. But um, I'll tell you that when I started at the Community Foundation back in 1997, there were a lot of trainings down in Indianapolis. And I can remember um, somebody telling me at one point in time, you know, you're going to have you're going to have stories and you'll you'll live through things and you'll know things that you'll be able to share. But for now, you might want to borrow from other people who've been around. Well, at that time, the Community Foundation was only it wasn't even five years old yet. So there weren't a lot of stories. Um, I will tell you that before I ever started, so I was to start on a Monday and that Friday, um, I got a phone call from my mother-in-law's neighbor um, or a neighbor of a neighbor that, that there had been a suicide and the neighbors were collecting money and they wanted to start a fund at the foundation and what did I need, to, what did they need to do? And I thought, I have no clue. I, I don't even know how to begin this. And, and so, so began trial by fire, right? Where you had to kind of jump in and figure out you know, what do I even tell these people and how does this work and, and how to navigate um, a good message and how to reach out to the family in the, in the correct way. And so um, that, was, that was my very first foray into the community foundation field. And, and I'll tell you the stories have come ever since then, some really good, some um, not so good. And I think that um, it's important to be able to tell both kinds of stories. So when you think about it, I wanna ask you, to, to think about as we're talking today, what's a story with you that has just um, stuck with you throughout your life? Has been stuck in your head and you find yourself going back to thinking about it and, and the stories that shaped you. So I want you to think a little bit about that. Um, when was the last time you heard a really great story? Something that um, influenced you and, and you felt like it was a great story? What made it good? Let's, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And if there's time for the end, I think we can all share a little bit of stories if, if we have stories that we want to share that resonate. So, so how do you tell your story? How do you get somebody to listen? Um, believe me, I am not by any means an expert. I've just done a lot of it. And so I kind of sat down and um, I did a little research and I thought, well, that one makes sense and this one makes sense. So I've got about eight tips I'm going to try and share with you today. Um, just some thoughts and best practices that comes together on being a good storyteller. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is you need to know your audience um, and you need to be able, when you can, speak their language a little bit. For example, if you know local slang, it kind of builds common ground with the people that you're talking to. Um, if we have a youth foundation, right, with, with a lot of kids, and if I say to them, dude, that is so dope. <laughs> they like that a whole lot better than me saying, oh, that's a lovely idea, right? So there's just a little bit of stuff that you can kind of, uh, I guess, tie into a little bit of the audience that you're talking to. Um, and from the very get-go, you wanna think about the message that you're delivering and who is on the receiving end of that message. And I'll give you an example. So um, I always think it's good to have some anecdotes and some funny little stories when you're, when you're speaking to groups. And so um, there's, there's one that I shared about um, the governor of Texas. And years ago, he and his wife were driving through desolate part of Texas, it was dry, they had to stop. And it was back in the days when they were still a filling station, right? So somebody, there was still an attendant that's gonna come out and pump your gas. So they pulled in and the attendant comes out and he starts to pump the gas and imagine the governor's wife's shock when she realizes it's an old boyfriend. And she kind of said, hello. And the, the mayor, the governor could tell that she was a little bit unsettled about it. And they made small talk and said, hello. And that, got their business wrapped up and they get back in the car to drive away. And he looks over at his wife and says, well, I know what you're thinking, Trigger. You're thinking that, that if you married him, you'd be working that gas station. And she said, no, I'd be thinking he was governor. So I thought that was really a cute story. Would I tell that story to um, the guys at the VFW? Probably not, probably not. But when I shared it, I shared it with the American Women in Business Association, and we we're talking about empowering women, and it was a perfect segue into what we were going to talk about that day. So I think it's important when you can tell your message and know your story and, and plan to get where you're going with that, with that story. It keeps you on track a little bit. 
Um, I think maybe I guess Margarita at this point, I'm going to ask you to show a video. I've got a few videos to show you today. Um, the first one is from United. And um, it, it goes along with my second message, which is knowing your message and what you want to convey when you share when you share your story. So that's the other part. You know your audience first, and number two, you know your message. Um, I'm going to let this speak for itself and tell you. Um, this gentleman is named David Carroll, and years ago he and his band were traveling from Halifax to Omaha. And during a layover um, with his band at O'Hare, he heard a fellow passenger say, "Hey." those baggage handlers are throwing guitars down there. And he was aghast at looking out the window and seeing guitars being thrown out on the, on the ramp in the baggage. So um, what ensued was his, his story. And I'm gonna let, let him speak for it. You can listen to the story. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. United breaks guitars. 